Let's go! Oh, welcome back to the Fortune A Sports Radio Show. I do, I do, I do, 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 do. Are you listening to <laughs> Doo-Wop earlier today? <laughs> I was. I was. I had a crazy Pandora mix going. It was nuts. All right. Do All right. Shot, so man. let's welcome our guest to the table right now. Uh, this man is a 7 2 behemoth of a man. He uh, played for St. Anthony's and Elizabeth High School, uh, Seton Hall University, and first round pick of the Utah Jazz in 1993. Also has two gold medals in the uh, USA uh, U18 program. And he's also got a book out right now, which is called A Perfect Fit. Everybody welcome Luther Wright to the table. Luther, what's up, brother? Get these your homework, man. That's good. <laughs> uh, that's good. We got a little bit of everything. Things are going well. We got internet service. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Wireless and everything. No doubt, no doubt. All right, so we want to thank you for uh, being on the show tonight. We also want to thank Rock Grizz, who's in the studio right now, and uh, Aaron First Wonder for setting up this interview for us. Shout out uh, to my man. So thank you very much town. to Appreciate our it. to our Appreciate studio it. brothers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so one of the things, you know, we're doing the research, are you? One of the things that I read that was very interesting, on here it says, Wright never wanted to play basketball, yet standing more than seven feet tall, even as a boy, he thought he had no choice. What what exactly does that mean? Well, I couldn't I couldn't be a mailman or a butcher <laughs> or a cor- you ever seen a cor- seven two crossing guard? <laughs> You know what I mean? That a lot so, of people would listen, not cross the street. You can stop cars. No <laughs> yeah. doubt. Without a stop sign, right? Slap yeah, people with their motorcycles. No, I mean, I love the game. I love the competitiveness of basketball. Um, but it wasn't my first love. My first love is music. Like, okay. I'm, a, yeah. I'm a musician, DJ, producer. And uh, music was my passion and my first love. But basketball, it allowed me to um, escape, you know, like, the hood, and, and, and I got a, a college scholarship, and I was fortunate enough to get drafted in the NBA. So um, basketball afforded me a lot of luxuries, and, and, and I got to travel the world for free. Mm-hmm. And, you know, got free sneakers all my life, you know. So basketball was was good to me. So I, <laughs> nice. It's not that I didn't love it. You know, I, I love music a little bit more. So, right. You know what I mean? so, so how did you first get into basketball? What, what was the start? Uh-huh. Um, born and raised in Jersey City. Um, grew up in um, Booker T Projects, downtown Jersey City, and um, it was a basketball court. You know, where my where my grandmother lived, her window was I could look right out the window and right. watch the guys playing basketball, right. and I was like intrigued by it. But I was a little bit scared to go play. And then one time, um, one of the uh, they had like a summer league or something in in, in my uh, development, and they asked me to play. And I, I put it in a book. It's, it's kind of funny. Um, I didn't know anything about basketball, <laughs> and um, I blocked my teammate's shot, <laughs> and I scored for the for the, the other for team. the other team. That's how that's how good I was in basketball early out. So so how old are you? How old are you when this is all going down? Maybe about ten, okay, eleven. So you're a youngster. Yeah. yeah. How, how big were you at that age? Uh, I don't remember. I just know that we, a I was bigger, always a lot, cats. Bigger, than a lot bigger than you guys. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's for damn sure. <laughs> That's not that hard. <laughs> no, I, I really didn't start, uh, you know, noticing my height until uh, maybe like seventh grade. I was like six, seven, Jeez. six, six. Wow. In the seventh grade. I know my in the eighth grade, I was like six, nine. So, wow. No kidding. Yeah. I don't even think I had doors that big. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you brought up you lived in Booker T and, and mm-hmm. I was reading a little bit of uh, of your autobiography or your biography, um, and you, you, a lot of uh, initially you spoke about your grandmother. Yeah. Um, a very interesting character. Uh, you gonna talk about yeah. the gun? <laughs> <laughs> you my, got him, my man. My pistol so, yeah. grandma. Yeah. <laughs> that was nah, a great phrase. Um, yeah. So they said. I mean, we were the projects, man, and and my grandmother's from down south, so ah. uh, you know they they was known for. Carrying that hammer before, you know, <laughs> it was um, a, tw- like, a twenty-two. Yeah, a twenty-two. <laughs> word, and um, she'll shoot at you, man. <laughs> yeah, word up. She, she'll pop you. She yeah. had to. So no, I, I like the book. Don't mess with grandma. Yeah, it man. said grandma. She smoked Paul Malls. So, two, two, two cannonballs to oh, 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 word. My grandmother was grandma. a grandma. My grandmother was a G, son. Damn, word. Man. How, how about the story when she took a shot? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and look, in, the, in that apartment. If, it's, it's a hole in the wall in, in an apartment, and she used to, to point at it and like, "Y'all keep messing with me." <laughs> <laughs> See that hole in the wall? Yeah, I missed on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I, missed, I missed that time. 
<laughs> ain't happening twice. <laughs> ain't gonna happen twice. That's right. <laughs> right. So, right. So, was she a, was she a big influence in your life? You most remember? definitely, man. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. my grandmother. Um, she passed away in like 2000, 2001. And um, I, I miss my mama, man, you know, because uh, she just loved her grandkids and her kids, period. Right. And uh, she was like, she kind of kept my family close-knit. Like, right. everybody oh, yeah. go to mama's house to eat. Everybody drop their kids off to, for mama to babysit the kids, you know, so. Um, Very I'm family just, environment. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no awesome, doubt. awesome. All right, so, so, all right, so you said like seventh grade is when basketball really started becoming prevalent. Talk about that transition from that time to going into high school and, you know, where a lot of the high schools knocking down your door to get you to play for them. Well, I mean, <clears throat> Jersey City, when I was in grammar school, they had, we had a, a, a very competitive CYO um, league, mm -hmm. and um, we would play at different – we play at um, White Eagle Hall. We would play at um, o o OLM. We would play at. Um, we even got a chance to play um, at the Meadowlands because we won the city championship. Nice. My team wow. went um, 33 and 0. Wow! And Wonder we, why? We yeah. Won the, um, <laughs> yeah, we won the city championship. Saint, Basically, I got a lid Pat. on the room. <laughs> play that. Play for St. Pat's, and um, we had a pretty good squad, man. And I was still, you know, like green as far as uh, what my basketball ability would eventually become as I um, matured and, and got some proper training. Shout out to um, AAU coach Sandy Papayonen. But um, I, I knew, you know, in, in, in eighth grade going into my freshman year that this could be something that um, could make me into a uh, household name. Right. And um, I, get, I got my first college letter in the eighth grade. I got a letter from Notre really? Dame. And, no oh, yeah. yeah the Irish. Irish. Oh, that's nice. awesome. Yeah, so I definitely remember that for the rest of my life. Like, because I graduated from PS41 on um, okay. Ocean Avenue. And yeah. I remember uh, when the package came in the mail, like, my principal called me down to the office. And was like, I thought you were in trouble. Yeah, I thought, I like, oh, <laughs> what man, are you they, now? They, they, <laughs> they done caught me stealing lunches or something like that. I done got caught. But um, it wasn't. They ain't got to eat. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Took some extra cookies or something. <laughs> but um, I got to the office. They was like, you got a letter from, they had opened my letter, of course, but. You know, just to see, they sent me a um, like a, a program of the uh, you know like the uh, the college mm -hmm. um, program of the, of the uh, basketball team, and Dave Rivers was at Notre Dame at the time, and just to get a a letter, you know, Luther Wright, we we heard about you. I'm like, where are y'all wow. heard about me? That's and crazy. I'll, I'll never forget that. And then that's when the ball started rolling, like right. from my freshman year to my till I decided to um, go to Seton Hall. <clears throat> like I would get. Duffel bags full of. Cash? I had shoe box. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No. Everyone. Statue of limitations. No, yes, it's all brother. good. No, it's all no, good. no, no. I, I was on the straight and narrow. Um, <laughs> you were with these programs, oh, weren't? Man, <laughs> but um, yeah, I would get. Sh I would have shoe boxes full of uh, letters of intent from colleges, wow. man. From I, I remember it was so crazy. Um, my my junior year in high school, um, I had Jerry Tarkanian, Rick Shark. Pitino. Yeah. Jim Beheim, Syracuse. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. The head coach from Princeton at the time was um, P. Carrell. P. Carrell. Yep. Princeton um, offense, yeah. I had them all sitting at my practice because I had a pretty good squad. And actually, my point guard, Mike Brennan, he um, he went to um, Princeton. Okay. On scholarship. And then I had one, one another one of my guys um, I played with uh, with the UNLV, um, Alcides Catano and um, Malik Jackson. Alcides went on to play in the NFL. Malik Jackson had an outstanding career at um, – uh, the University of Rutgers, right. and um, okay. a lot of the guys on my team, you know, they went on to um, big time athletes. Yeah, play, yeah. play, get yeah. A, nice. a, a, a scholarship to college. So, talk about a little about your your high school career. I think uh, your freshman year at St. Anne's, and then you went on to Elizabeth. Uh, yeah. You won a couple state championships. Uh, how was that? How was how well, was the high school career? Oh man, um, I, I can't say I, I, I you know, miss St. Anthony's. Uh, it was just, it was just a, a bit much for me to travel. I was living in Irvington at the time. Okay. And, you know, I used to travel, you know, back and forth from Irvington to Jersey City. And sometimes That's a hike. Yeah. I would, um, I would fall asleep on a train and end up at the World Trade Center. <laughs> well, no, real, real talk, going to school, on end up path, at the World right? Trade Center, yeah. be late for school. And, um, so my grades, of course, uh, suffered behind that. And, you know, they had us, you know, doing manual labor. We was, um, keeping, uh, White Eagle Hall, with the bingo hall and stuff like we would go and break Mobs the tables and down yeah. and, the, yeah. and the, uh, all that stuff 
So, I, you know, I'm young and I was getting, I was, felt like I was, I should be getting paid for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, I, I, I had to transfer out of St. Anthony's and um, just so happened I, I, I went to Elizabeth High School and you talk about um, going from a small school to Elizabeth the biggest huge. school in the, yeah. in the country. Yeah. And it's like a melting pot because all the different, you know, ethnic groups yeah. there, you know, I went to high school with my people, Haitian people, Spanish people, white people, Colombians, right, and, uh, right. Peruvian, all type of people, hmm. man. So I was exposed to, you know, different cultures and different uh, different types of people. And once I started winning, you know, winning county, state, sectional, all that, they all loved you. I was the big. I was. I was seriously the big man on campus. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and it was it was a great experience You're playing like at the huge school center. and everybody knows oh, you. Oh man, it was, it was What's crazy. What's that like? I mean, it it was fun because you you know you, I I was just trying to be normal, just be a a, a a regular high school guy and and they made it comfortable for me. Right. You know oh, what I cool. mean? Like my teammates would you know a lot of the guys played football so. I would go to the games with my varsity jacket on. How did you on. not play football? Yeah, was, <laughs> my coaching wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let you. Nah, I ain't want to play anyway. He would have hurt too many now, people. Now, did, <laughs> now did the football coaches ever come? Of course, they, the they wanted me to play plus. football. Yeah. And they, you know, I used to, I, I had a, like a ninety miles per hour fastball. Get out! Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they well, actually, look at these hands! <laughs> my God! Yeah. So they actually probably bigger had than the computer the, we got here. Yeah, I mean, the pitching. <laughs> the old hidden ball trick. Yeah, with his own hand. And I was, I was throwing the baseball around. They were trying to get me to play baseball too, but. My coach is like, nope, <laughs> nope. That's that's my guy. Yeah. We we got a job to do. You so. you knew basketball was your your bread and butter. Yeah, so it's pretty speak. much, yeah. man. Yeah. Right. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about the whole college process. You know, a lot of the guys that we have on the show, we talk about you know the whole recruiting thing. I find it so fascinating, you know, because you get all these great coaches that we hear about, like behind the scenes stories and stuff like that. So you end up going to Seton Hall, but who else was in the mix? Uh, uh my last five. Uh, colleges I, I, I was considering was Kentucky, Syracuse, Rutgers, and Villanova. Okay. And I decided, I mean, Seton Hall was a no-brainer. I, I tell kids all the time, you know, um, especially the, the, you know, the blue chips from in, in New Jersey, a lot of the guys want to go elsewhere to play basketball. And I'm right. like, why not go to Seton Hall? They, it's the Big East. That's like, that was like oh, yeah. the best it's tournament, the, the, the best. Yeah, yeah you, you played play the Garden. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and now they got the Prudential Center, but when when I was playing, we used to, we had bigger crowds than the Nets had. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, Meadowlands. Yeah. Meadowlands. Oh, you guys would definitely you know hate saying? that in the Seton Hall. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, why, why wouldn't you want to capitalize off of that? Absolutely. And, and and they got they get good TV exposure. When I was playing, we, you know, we played like two games on CBS. We was always on ESPN. Right. And uh, but a lot of the guys, man, they. You know, like they want to go elsewhere and play basketball, and I don't understand it. And I, 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 I fault the recruiting that Seton Hall does. I don't think they go after these guys hard enough right. or sell the school, you know, with with yeah. enthusiastically. Like, right. yeah, look, y'all should stay home, and we could win it. We could probably go be better than Big Lou and them team. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, you know, what I mean, like, you could use us to sell the school because we're right. always around, like myself, Terry the Head, Jerry Walker. Right. Um, we we still go to the games and and um, we're not like I'm not coaching at Seton Hall, but I know the players and I, right, you're I, involved I, in the program. Yeah, I go over there and, right. and show my face and stuff like that. But um, they're losing the the recruiting battle to these other big schools right, around yeah. the country because I don't know what they're not doing right. as far as selling the Big. Well, it used to be it's not the Big East anymore, but um, just selling the fact that y'all play at the Potential Center and 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 at Seton Hall like. Seton Hall pride, man. Yeah. It, 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 it got to make it come. They back. should send you some of these kids' doors. I'm like, true. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine yeah. him knocking on like John Wall's door. <laughs> they don't want, they don't want yes, to yes, 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 Mr. Wright. I'll go there. I'll go there. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so talking about those Seton Hall teams, and and I was mentioning you uh, during a break, um, you know, uh, PJ Carlissimo, who, you know, was uh, the coach of the Nets last year, mm -hmm. um, you know, famous – with Spreewell, he had the whole thing, but but you know NBA. What NBA do you mean, coach? Um, <laughs> took that team to the final four in '89, and then mm -hmm. and then he had you guys in '93. And I read a quote, and, and he said, you know, you guys, um, you know, he, he had that final four team, but he said your guys' team in '93 was the best team he ever had. And Boy. just doing a little research on it, I, I found it crazy. You had yourself, Jerry City guy, Terry DeHair, all Big East player, Jerry City guy, Jerry Walker, Big East defensive player of the year, 
and Danny Hurley, Jerry uh, Jerry City guy, all coming off the bench, uh, coming off the bench. But four four out of the top six guys, you had four Jerry City guys. That, I mean, that must have been that must have been awesome, huh? Imagine if, if Bob would have stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he yeah, didn't. We're, we're all good fans. <laughs> yeah, we're it's all good. No, nah, but um, yeah, it, it was. I mean, we played basketball together. Even if, you know when I went to Elizabeth High, like we played for the Jersey Road Runners. Summer League, AAU. So, yeah, right. so we all we was like. And I grew up with them guys. Like right. I, Terry the Terry, I went to. Yeah, I went to. I was in kindergarten with Terry. Really? You know what I mean? So I've been knowing Terry my whole life. I've been knowing Jerry, part of my almost my whole life because uh, where he grew up was not far from where my grandmother lived. So you know, um, those are my boys, man. My, those are my family for life. But um, I don't know, man. It's like <clears throat> when when you in that when you in that experience, man. It's like. We knew we had the talent. We knew right. we was um, better than a lot of teams that we played against. But some, you know, sometimes I, I didn't get the ball as much as I thought I should. Or um, I, I don't know. It, 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 I always think about that. Uh, you know, the Western, Western Kentucky yeah. game. So, yeah. Yeah. Just, so just to the audience, you were you were a two seed going into that nine three tournament. Yeah. Uh, second round, you play Western Kentucky, who ironically the coach of Seton Hall now is it's, Kevin yeah, Willard. He was the, the, coach, ah. the coach, the coach of the Western Kentucky team, he was Kevin Willard's father. Well, yeah, you did your homework. Oh, I'm not. Come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> he doesn't. He so, doesn't like to be wrong ever. <laughs> you know what? He, you know what he does every Wednesday. He sons. <laughs> <laughs> sons, he doesn't get a tan. Sons, sons yeah. and does his research. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah but, but, so, but so I know, I know you, uh, you took that game pretty hard, huh? That, yeah, that that's the year I came out and um, declared uh, for the draft, and they tried to say it was my fault, but it really wasn't my fault. We just played a it's bad a team game. game. What happens? Yeah, they was quicker than me and and uh, got me in foul trouble, and they beat us. So yeah, you know you can't can't cry with spilled milk. I, I'm, I was blessed to be in that, get that experience. Right. You know, we played two years in a row in the NCAA tournament. We won a Big East regular season. We won the Big East championship. We blew Syracuse out. There you go. My team Which was the first no team piece. that ever beat Syracuse. You know what I mean? So a lot of little things yeah. that no, a lot of huge I've done. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Lot of stuff we did at Seton Hall that I don't think they ever did since then. And right. No, not even close. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> How about you know playing, playing big time basketball? Uh, who who uh, you know obviously center wise? Uh, who was maybe your toughest competition, or who was the toughest guy you went up against that you did well against? Somebody maybe we know in college. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, um, I'm I, just I, thinking. Do you ever play like I know like Eric Montross? Do you ever play Carolina? Kill him. Yeah. Man, did you? No, He's yeah, weak. We, we, did you? We they beat us, but. That was like I had I had my <clears throat> had one of my best college games against um, Eric Montrose really? at Maryland. How many yeah. drop on? I think I had twelve or thirteen, but I had like like ten, eleven rebounds and like just four steals. Yeah, really I nice, them up. nice, nice. Um, but I was me, me and um, Eric was playing. I played against him in the McDonald's game, high right, school, right. Uh, AAU circuit. So <clears throat> you know, we I, I was real familiar with him, but um. And then we had another good game. We played um, Ohio State. Okay. When they had uh, Chris Gent, they had uh, uh, Jimmy Jackson. They had um, they had a they had a squad. They had the kid um, uh, Thunderbird, uh, Thunderbird, uh, Lawrence Thunderbird. Lawrence Thunderbird. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they had a, they had a crew, and, and we 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 did them dirty at the um, at the Meadowlands on national TV. Nice. But we could never beat North Carolina. We played them twice at the. <laughs> That's all right. Duke got them. Well, they, well, yeah. they wound up winning national championship. That yeah. famous Chris Webber game, yeah, the timeout time game. Out. Yeah, out. boy. Yeah. Now, what was it like playing in the All American game? You know, you got the top players in the country right yo, there. Yo, it's like it, it, it's the same as <clears throat> you go from high school to college mm -hmm. and college to the pros. It's like <clears throat> the McDonald game. That's the best players in America. Yeah. Right? And in the NBA, that's the best players. In the world, in the world, and you know you you got to always be on your on your A game, right. or you're gonna get your your, your butt smacked. And um, <laughs> no, nah, seriously, and 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 I think that that's that that's what where I fell short when I got to the pros. It was like um, I, I, I played against Carm. Can you imagine? You ever seen Carmelo Malone? Carmelo. Person? Oh no, no, I haven't. Yo, I, I was I was talking to some guys maybe a couple months ago about how this guy looked. 
He looked, you know, you remember those action figures? The, 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 <laughs> the, the wrestling men? How Go to the starting yeah. lineup, right? Oh that was my it. God, yo, this guy looked like a um, 6'9", uh, nine, just yeah, huge, just, right? Just diesel, yeah. like mm-hmm. cut up and and like somebody just chiseled, chiseled him. Man. <laughs> yeah. And he was strong as the ox, man. And he, I mean, if if I had like a little bit of his work ethic, I'd have probably just been retired from the league. Yo, this dude used to be at practice. Like six in the morning, work lifting weights, really? and then he'd say afterwards to lift some more and and, and do his little treatment or what. But you never seen him in the weight. Room. I mean, never seen him in the in the training room. Getting, like he never really he had an played injury. forever, man. Yeah. Now you played on Utah Jazz, and and obviously John Stockton was the point guard. Tell me they didn't try to put you in some John Stockton show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. I, don't, I don't think you can pull it. Why? No, <laughs> man. I, I um <laughs> visuals here. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, they um. Actually, the year I got there was the first year they got longer shorts. <laughs> <he's> still, <laughs> Thank God. For everyone's sake. He yeah. still kept his, his yeah, shorts. He, yeah, he always did, yeah. Uh, John, so, John was in uh, So I know you, you going into the draft, you declare uh, after that, you know, that upset game. And, um, you know, your projected first-round pick, you were you were at the draft, correct, uh, yeah. in Detroit? Yes, sir. Um, so, you know, you were obviously projected to go high. And I know the Nets. Um, we're picking, we're picking in that draft, you know right, what? In the, right in the teens. Yeah. And I and I saw in your uh, in your book, uh, you you really wanted to be a net, huh? Well, um, Willis you? Reed was the, uh, he was either the general manager or he the president, was the maybe president or of the team. Yeah, yeah. And he came down. I had a, um, I was working out in Myrtle Beach. I was th- I had a house down there for the summer to work working out and out, stuff. Yeah. And he came down and worked me out. And on paper, they was going to take me with the tenth pick. But that's the year Petrovic got killed. Got the car accident, right? And 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 they needed a shooting guard, right. so they took um, Rex Walters from yeah, Kansas. Yep. Yeah. 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 But and, the, and you were right. You were right there. I'm sure you're writing a mix for that, huh? Yeah. I, I thought I was gonna be home, man. And things didn't work out. And they said, with the 18th pick, the Utah Jazz. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're not a Mormon. Go to Mormon country. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's get to a quick commercial break, real quick, and then we'll break down uh, life in Utah after that and and beyond. Okay. All right, uh, and beyond. we're gonna go uh, to a video right now from Me and the Moonlight. This is Lois Slant, and when we get back, part two of the interview with Luther Wright. After this, 14A Sports on 15 Minutes Fame Radio. <laughs> 15 Minutes of Fame. Let's go. Welcome back to the 14A Sports Radio Show. All right, so this is part... We're having you back. <laughs> so part two of our interview right now with Luther Wright. All right, so now in 1993, uh, as we were saying before we got to the break, you end up getting drafted, <laughs> you end up getting drafted by the Utah Jazz. Now, all right, draft night. I know, you know, we were alluding to it, but, you know, just in case people are tuning in right now. So... You're going to Utah. Now, are you thinking... Hold on. Let me interrupt. What kind of... St- <laughs> oh, <laughs> big shocker. <laughs> no, but, no, no, but, no, but the fashion on draft night's a big deal, right? Ah. With, with the suit and all. Oh, yeah. What what, yeah, what, what'd you rock? What'd you, first of all, where a, do you find clothes? I had, I had a... Um, Special had a custom, tailor, huh? Uh, yeah, Not where we shop. Suit. <coughs> Shout out to um, my man Kevin Willis, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was a virgin for a while, wasn't yeah. he? he was <laughs> bullshit. I don't know. He, uh, <laughs> so he, he's still doing the fashion, actually. Um, he I saw him at um, All-Star Weekend about two years ago out in um, L.A., and he had a nice fashion show out there, man. And so shout out to him because he, he made my suit. But, um, yeah, I had to get a custom suit. and um, It's a lot of material. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of material. <laughs> oh boy! And so you have your swag up. You go. You but go meet fresh. Stern. How, how'd you? Uh, how, was Stern cool? What did he say? And just welcome to the NBA. Yeah. You know, just the regular. Yeah. Regular stuff. Yeah. stuff. Did, you, did you give him? Did you give him the hog? Just a handshake. No, I just gave him the handshake. Yeah, regular. I, we, we wasn't doing the hug. Probably would have yeah. nah, yeah. crushed him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Suffocating him uh, for the charge. Right. We got to find your first day in the league. Cleveland found my first day. Like First day, uh, 10 G's off the top. Yeah. All right, so, you know, go, going into Utah. Now, are you looking at this like, Jesus Christ, what I got to go Utah? to Utah? Uh-huh. Or was it more like, you know, hey, I'm in the NBA. This is uh, awesome. It, yeah, the, that was the first thought. but <laughs> You don't look like much of a skier. I had no idea where Utah was. No, <laughs> nah, seriously, I, I, I'm, I, I was I was raised on the Knicks and the Nets. Right, you know right. what I mean? Boston, Philly. East you know, Coast. I'm from the East Coast. Yeah, so. Yeah. When they said the Utah Jazz, I was like, okay. So where? Now I got to wear know it purple. Was. Never, heard, never. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've heard of yeah. uh, the Utah, but I didn't know 
where it was, what to expect. And, and, and on my flight out there, you know, as we get ready to land, I'm, I'm looking out the window, and I see snow caps on the, on the mountains. Uh-uh. What the uh, hell? <laughs> but, you know. I didn't get drafted by Denver. I should have packed my Hawaiian shirt. Oh, man. But Utah, was a, uh, that was a great experience, man. Um, very yeah. clean town. Couldn't get malt liquor on Sunday. <laughs> Bastards. Uh, Those Mormons. Yo, y'all would have been, been mad out there. Because <laughs> you know, cause you know good. <laughs> We couldn't survive. <laughs> no Bud Light on Sunday. Y'all would have been mad. No, nah, but um, it, you know what? The, the good thing about Utah, man, it, it's a great place to um, raise kids, man. And yeah. It's clean. And, and, and they're nice people, man. I, yeah. I, real nice people out there. I met some interesting people. I don't I imagine don't. many people be mean to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry Sloan was Jerry Sloan was mean. Oh to yeah, uh-huh. God, so yeah. God God damn it, nah, <laughs> but, um, nah. It, I mean, it, the experience was great. I, I just wish that I was more mature. Like maybe if I had stayed in school for my senior year. So, so how old were you? 19, 20 years old? I was like 21, 22. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, just wild from the hood, from Jersey City, Elizabeth. No, it was overwhelming. Yeah, man. And, and um, I got, you know, I, I got off into getting high, high in college. I mean, like, I, I, I got off into the drug scene um, at Seton Hall. So when I got to the league, they were, you know, they didn't really test for marijuana. So I was still smoking and, 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 and you know, just partying all the time and not really, um, into the game like I should have been and uh, didn't really take advantage of who my teammates was like as far as wanting to you know em- emulate somebody or, or look up and, and be like somebody you know be like John Stockton or uh, Carl Malone or the, or the other professionals that I was surrounded by I just and those guys didn't try and like rein you in they tried to man but I'm from Jersey City <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear that yeah. Nah. Listen, John. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. Word. <laughs> Word. Right. Like, you want this? <laughs> you know I mean? Now, yeah. now, when you get wrapped up in all this, now, you know, was it any any teammates, you know, other than John Stockton or Carl Malone, or you know, just people that are out on the scene trying to trying to be with an NBA player? What you mean, smoking and all and partying yeah. and all that? Yeah. I mean. Is it part of the lifestyle? It, 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 it just you could get caught up in it yeah. because it's you know you always want to, especially if you go on a, if you went on the road, you definitely want to go to the, the club and right. and, be, and be macking on chicks and all that, drinking. And Jr. Smith that style, laying pipe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not you know, even on the road and I want to go to the club. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know um, you have to. It's at the end of the day, my approach was, why do I have to work as hard? Now I'm, I'm rich now. You know yeah. when it should have been okay. Uh, this is you have to you have to approach it like it's a job, and I right. approach it like it was still college or having fun, and and it cost me my career, man. And and uh, but you know at the end of the day, I got drafted out the 18th pick of the 1993 draft. You know I made I made a couple dollars. You know I'm still living off that check to today. That's great. Um, I'm blessed to um, have that experience and and. You know, got a chance to meet some cool guys that play on a, a winning uh, championship caliber team, even though they didn't win the uh, the NBA Finals two years that two years that Mike um, did what he did. But um, just to be around that and 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 know those guys personally and and, and know what could have been if, if if my career would have panned out the way it was supposed to pan out. But I'm just blessed and, and grateful for the experience, and nobody. You know, I'm, I haven't met too many people that said they got drafted in the NBA first round, <laughs> right, huh? walking down Broadway in <laughs> You know what I mean? That so, makes uh, four of us. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, all right. So, talk about your interactions with Jerry Sloan during this whole thing. Now, you know, I know you were just saying, you know, he's a real ball buster, pain in the ass, old guys. And, right, you know, you I'm sure that. any yeah. any, any of us were like, but you know, while while all this is going on, you know, what's he saying to you? What's management saying to you? You know, man, it, 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 you know, it's like I, I look at it like a kid that always in the principal's office or always, you know, getting got to stay after school or yeah. always on punishment or in timeout all the time. And and I, I, I rebelled against that, man. Like I had a problem with people yelling at me and, 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 you know, he was a great coach, but 
he wasn't a good. You couldn't uh, relate to him. Or not, he yeah, couldn't relate to I you. Could, yeah, yeah, and and it was tough. Yeah, you know, and and all I knew was to rebel. I'm like, man, forget you, man. You know, not right. say it to him in his face, but right. behind the doors, I just act a fool and right. and do what I wanted to do, and and um, it didn't work for me. You know, and 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 the, when they got their first opportunity to get me out of there, they got me out of there, and that was like 17, 18 years ago. But let, let me ask you this: talent wise, do you feel like you could compete in the league? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm seven two, and I could play. Yeah, and I, you know, I was I was in pretty good shape after the um, my first year there, and um, so I I felt I felt like I could help contribute. Right. Um, and, and and be effective. Look how long Sean Bradley was in the league. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> He's just big. <laughs> yeah. And um, I didn't get that chance. Yeah. I didn't get a second chance after after the Utah waived me. Yeah. No other team. No I kind of got blackballed really yeah. because uh-huh. of the you know the mental the, the health issues right. I had with uh, right. manic depression and bipolar and um, all that other stuff. So I felt like no other team wanted to take that chance on me because it was so you know they blew it up like. Uh, I had TV people at my house. Really? Um, I had people camped out on my lawn and stuff. Damn, like when I had the nervous breakdown. Shit. Yeah, man. You know, so I, I guess no other team wanted to deal with that, and I didn't get a second shot. I mean, I did get a try with the Boston Celtics, but I was, I was in my mess then. I was right. getting high, you, crazy. Yeah, then. you weren't. You weren't I was, ready yeah, to I was Nah. Now, yeah. now there's a guy in the NBA right now. I believe Royce White, yeah. the Houston Rockets. You know, yeah. he he deals with the. I think he was. You don't like flying. Yeah, he's got that issue. Um, you know, do you, do you liken that to his case at all? And if so, you know, what advice would you have to him right now? Uh, well, his, his his situation is a little different from mine. It's a different time. It's he has more access to getting the proper right help, whatever it is that he needs. I, I think mental yeah. health, uh, you know, has come a long way. Even yeah, the last but it's, it's years, still so, yeah. it's still right. not uh, talked about. It's a little like taboo. That. It's still yeah, absolutely behind behind closed doors. Just right. like shh, don't. Mm-hmm. Don't don't tell. We don't know. Don't tell. It's th- it's like that. And I, I and I believe that the guy he needs to get some help, or he needs to just understand his what what he has to do. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 never mind. You know, you gotta you on a professional basketball team, man. Right. You gotta get over that fear of flying, right. and 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 do whatever it is you gotta do. Or you gonna be out there. You gonna be on the outside of the NBA looking in and wish be like, damn, shoulda woulda coulda. Shoulda jumped on that plane. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all I had to yeah. do. Because they, you know what it is. They're not going to. Um, I won't. I won't say they're not gonna go out of their way, but but they're not gonna do nothing extra to you know like it, it's gonna take away from his development right. if he doesn't. You know, travel with the team, go do the rookie stuff, and right. and and you have to go. You ha- you can't. They can't put you on a train or put you on a bus two days ahead so you yeah, can right. make it to yeah. the city that you got to play at. Right. Because it's going to have effect on you mentally, physically, yeah, and all that good stuff. So, man, I mean, that's the only advice I would give him is, look, man, I take a sleeping pill or something before you get on the plane, <laughs> like they used to do right. my man from the A team. They that's knock why him they out. Serve <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and do what you gotta do, brother. Yeah. You, you gonna miss out yeah. on a lot of bread. Yeah. Get yeah. Drunk, huh? So, so you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <You're drunk>. Not <laughs> in Utah. <laughs> oh, not on not Sunday. Not Especially Sunday. on Sunday. <laughs> church of Latter Day Saints. Yeah, man, they everywhere now too. <laughs> Yo, they got oh, a church up on 125th Street. Get out, yep. yeah. Yo, they everywhere. They right? they walk around with their uh, their with shirt and ties, yeah, and yeah, yeah, you can yeah. you can spot them out. They, from a I, I see them, I see them walking around Jerry City all the time. They everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised I mean, they don't get beat up more. <laughs> yeah. That's why I, that's why I stay yeah. on Second Street. <laughs> <laughs> so so Luther, so now uh, you know you kind of get blackballed from the NBA. You really don't get a second look, and and, and then 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 where do you go? Then what happens? Oh man, like drugs, like cocaine. Yeah. I started using more. Start smoking hell of a drug. more. Yes, it is, bro. <laughs> and um, drinking Sorry. more. You know, became homeless. Uh, and when I became homeless, it was a choice. You know, I, 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 I'm the type of person, I don't really like my mom to see me like that. Right. And she knew I was going through whatever I was going through. And uh, she would always ask me, you high? And that was like my trigger. I'd be like, nope, not yet. But I'd watch this. And I'd go be gone for like two, three weeks just on a binge, you know what I mean? And and when I come back home, she called the police or whatever, and they commit me to mental hospitals. And my life was just a mess for like 10 years, man. You went through a real difficult yeah, time. Yeah, man, it was, it was crazy. Years? Yeah, Jeez. 
until so you know. so what was so obviously that was uh, you know bad time horrible time um what what was the what what changed it around obviously now you do, you're doing great work what, what was the kind of breaking point for you or the well the, the when i got my toes amputated i got right. two toes cut off my right foot from being um homeless of course but you know uh living on the street and in the in the winter time not really having shoes that fit and um my, my toes got um infected really really bad and they had to amputate two of my toes off my right foot. And I remember when the doctors came to uh, do the surgery, they, they actually came twice to me. The first time they came, they was like, Lou, um, your toes are really, really badly infected. And I think we're going to have to do surgery. But I was high. And right. I heard them, but I was you, like, You didn't even know what nah. they were really saying. Then the doctor came back again and was like, Yeah, we definitely going to keep them. We're going to do the surgery. But um, we're, so, we're afraid to put you on the local anesthesia because you got so many other drugs in your system right. you might have a heart attack. And they numbed me from my hip down to my feet. So I actually heard them cut my toes off. Oh, I heard the saw wow. like you were awake. Wow. And they cut my toes off and like right before, you know, I prayed, like when I got to the hospital I was like beat up, you know, physically, mentally, I was just smoked out. And I prayed to God, like somebody actually a, a missionary, somebody came in my room and gave me this little white Bible and I was like, okay. I prayed. You know, I asked God. I said, look, just take the taste out of my mouth. You know what I mean? I was already sick. I was already tired. I was already beat down. Right. Um, I, I was at my bottom. And I said, you know, just take the taste out of my mouth. And I, the prayer was sincere. It, it was a foxhole prayer. Right. Because I was at my wit's end. I didn't know what, what other way to turn, where, what else to do. And, and, and I, I believe, you know, at that point, God heard my prayer. I mean, he was always with me, but he heard my prayer at that point. And once I got the surgery, you know, I stayed in the hospital for about two or three weeks. I had to learn how to walk again. Right. And um, I went back. I, once I got back on my feet, I was walking you know, on crutches and all that good stuff. And I went back out and tried to use again, but it was over. Like, I, whatever I caught that day, I gave it away. And that's that was... Got rid of the taste. Yeah. I'm going to give y'all... I like doing this too, just giving my uh my clean date. Nice. Um I got nine years, four months, eight days, seventeen hours and twenty one wow. minutes. Congratulations, clean. congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. Right. that's but, tremendous. Um and an another thing too, man, it's like my wife, man, like I've been this Sunday would be six years I've been married. Congratulations. Seven, that. Congrats. seven years with my wife, that's right? Awesome. And I wouldn't take like the, my mind is clear. Like I'm, I'm, I'm stress free. Right. Um. I just came from the gym before I got here. I, I was on the treadmill for like 35 minutes. But to have a woman in my corner, like, uh, when I met my wife, man, like I was like a year, in, year plus clean, and my baby sister had passed away. I mean, I got rest in peace to my baby sister. But I remember when I got the call, um, that my sister had passed away, um. I'm glad I was with my wife, right? Because I know if I was with my boys or some of my you, old you friends, I would have left. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, so you, um, she gave you that support she, system. She gave me the support system. She actually told me to let's go. We were supposed to go to church anyway. It's like we was preparing for uh, Thanksgiving. This was our first Thanksgiving together, and, right. and we was preparing uh, 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 a dinner for our family. And we was down at um, Pier One at uh, by the Holland Tunnel shopping. And when we came out of the uh, out of the store, my phone rang, and I picked it up, and all I could hear was my mother and my little nephew in the background screaming like, wow. ah, ah. so I banged before I hung it up, boom, and I gave it to my wife, and she called back, and sure wow. enough, we we knew that my sister had passed, but the blessing was my wife used to work at Jersey City Medical Center, right, so I was able to go in the back and view the body without having to wade and all that good stuff, all that good stuff, and I just say that to say. I'm blessed to have a wife like I have, cause she didn't know the Luther ba Luther Wright, the basketball player. Right, right. And that was part of my 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 um that my G my game. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, the chick was like, "What's up, baby? How you doing? <laughs> hey, how you it? doing? You tall? <laughs> what you do? You don't know what I am." Uncomfortable. <laughs> Rich, Rich, you ain't his type. You yeah, ain't his type. You're too short. <laughs> nah, um, and I'd be like, I I used to use my my you know my basketball stuff as part of my game, right, and I, right. you know, I get the chicks like that. 
But when I said it to her, hey, what's up? Hey, how you doing? You she don't shut know that me? down, huh? She ain't know who I was. Uh, like, uh, what? Really? What, what, <laughs> don't come what, at me with what, that. What was you under? <laughs> no, nah, but you know what I mean? It just goes to show that um, I finally met a woman that knew nothing about my past, right. but still accepted me for, for, for me. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and we, we, we still happily married. Awesome. Um, I'm in love. I'm still in love. I, I, I actually put something on my Instagram today. I put our, uh, our wedding picture up, and I was like, because one of our wedding songs was by uh, Eric Benet, The Last Time I Fall in Love. And I put it up there. I was like, yo, this is my wife. We happily married seven years together. Six years married, but this is the last time I'm going to fall in love. So, <laughs> shout out to my wife, Angie, That's baby. Awesome. I love you. That's smooth. That's smooth. <laughs> I'm taking notes over here. <laughs> Very similar. Hey, I got oats, and then we got a radio show. <laughs> Same, huh? Yeah, okay. he was the first on draft. That's a, I. I tried to. <laughs> hey, you, you never heard of fourteen? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they get they get, go crawling back Where under the rock. <laughs> That's what I get. <laughs> All right, so so now after you know a lot of this happened, when did you start doing the public speaking? I started doing the public um, public speaking, motivational speaking when my book came out um, three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. Uh, the name of that book, uh, A Perfect, Perfect Fit. Fit. Available where books are sold, Barnes & Noble, um, Amazon, online, yeah. Amazon. You so can download it. It's on iTunes. How about you talk about the title, A Perfect Fit? That, that a seems Perfect to have Fit. a couple different, uh, well, um, couple different meanings. Yeah, well, if you look at me, I don't fit perfect in, in this <laughs> studio. What do you mean? Or, you know what I'm saying? I don't or fit perfect. Chairs or, or chairs. <laughs> or the bus. Or the train. Or the light oh, rail. Oh, yeah. That must be interesting. Or airplanes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but God don't make jump. And we all are perfect fits. We just have to find where find, we fit in at. Find your way, yeah. And, 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 and do what you do, man. And I know I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what my calling is, but I do have a connection with kids. Like, I don't know if you noticed when the little baby walked in here and I, I reached my hand out to him. He gave me five. The kids love me. The old folks love me. My wife definitely love me. My <laughs> family love me. So I know I'm, I'm a people type of person. Right, and, right. And, and I know when I go speak, it's silence. Yeah. And people are just drawn to the fact that, um, well, the people that know me know that what I've been through, I don't look like what I went through. Right. And, and you know, like, I got to give all thanks to God for just allowing me to um, speak and help people understand. Like, I look at my life like if I could get off drugs, if I could get off the streets, if if I could stop getting high, anybody can, man. Right. Like, it, 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 it really bothers me because I live in Jersey City to see riding up uh, Jackson yeah. Avenue, riding up Ocean. Bad, yeah. To see the people just standing out on the corner and you look at them, they... I know him. Gives but you flashbacks, oh, right? Man, what, like what, what you've been through yourself. Yeah. I'm so Poor glad people. I, they're I, sick I, out there. Stopped, the yeah, man. But, yeah, it's disgusting. But on that. a more positive note, and I was talking to you uh, during a break, uh, I mean, you're seeing all team. Um, Terry DeHair, uh, you know, he was on the Board of Education. <laughs> Jerry Walker ran for mayor, is now building um, a community center. Yeah, actually, team, right across the street. From, yeah, yeah, right across the street from where I work, yourself, doing a mo uh, motivational speaking. And I think it's tremendous that you guys all, you know, staying within the community, all trying to give back. Um, you know, I think that's what it's all about. I, I really commend you on that. Absolutely. I appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, do my part and um, save some lives, man, do, do share my story or just uh, trying to inspire people, you know, either through Facebook or Instagram or a chance I get to just share a good word or a positive word with people. I look forward to it because... Um, People come up to me all the time and was like, yo, man, I really like that post you put up on Facebook. Or I like the way you worded what you said right. about That's whatever. That's so whatever great. Is talking about. You have such a fascinating life story from the fame to the rock bottom. And, and the you, comeback. And yeah, and the comeback. And now you, you, you uh, live your life with such an open book uh, like policy, you know. You willing to talk about it at any time. That's great. And I think that's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, the book, man, it, 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 uh, it helped me to get rid of some of the demons that right. was haunting me, you know, like... Kind of let it all out. Yeah, kinda. like, it's a, yeah. it's a section in the book where I talk about, you know, I was sexually molested as a kid. Um, really? But yeah, and uh, having to having to try to keep that secret for all these years. Wow. And it wasn't until three years ago that I wrote the book, that the book, you know, I had to go through the process of uh, writing it. I had a ghostwriter having to sit with this lady, shout out to Cameron Hunter, sit with her, and she asked me all these questions that I never told anybody right. about. And 
Somewhat therapeutic? Yeah, it definitely was therapeutic because it was like, I, I give an example, when I when I do speak, I was walking around my whole life with like a, 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 a duffel bag on my back full right. of stuff. Right. And I just, I carried it everywhere I went. Right. And, and it wasn't until I wrote the book and, and, and really talked about the stuff that I went through that I experienced that um, it wasn't an interview, it wasn't an article in the paper, it wasn't street talk or barbershop talk. It was really the way I saw it, the way I went through it. Because um, that's another thing I had to deal with after I pl stopped playing basketball. Um, all the rumors, like people was like, I was out in Utah naked, you know, <laughs> you know, like I had, I was out there bugging out. And when I got back to Jersey, just to hear that rumor, like I wasn't naked. I, I, had, I, just <laughs> I had a speedo on. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I had John Stockton yeah. shorts. And, <laughs> and you know how, and that's big too because there's no Facebook, you know, yeah, Instagram, was, anything like before, that. So that's that's where the paper, for the, the social media, media thing, yeah. and, and and you know, like um, I remember when I. I came, I came home, and it was, I was in Jersey about five or six years, and I moved out of state for a couple of years, and I came back, and people thought so I got killed when I moved <laughs> away. No, I was living in Rawway, and this, one of the guys I used to do music with, he saw me walking down the street, and he almost ran into a tree or something, because he, he, all I heard was, Grr! like, yo, Big Lou, that's you. I was like, yeah, well, what's going on? He said, yo, man. Somebody got your name on a CD to my rest in peace. Wow. Jeez. Like, I, yo, I done been through so much. Like, Did you go find that guy? Nah, man. It, <laughs> you know, honestly, I guess from where you came from, though, you know, it, I guess it wasn't that far-fetched, though. Yeah, but, yeah the know? lifestyle I was living, yeah. the way I was, you know, getting high and all that crazy stuff I was doing, I was dead. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But um, I just didn't, I just wasn't in the grave yet. Right. But, you know, I, I think I think God I turned that around, too. But um, just... But, you know, a lot of the rumors and the, and the false accusations and stories that were circulating about me and what happened and why did I, why I got cut and all that crazy stuff, man, it was it was nerve wracking. Like, right, I'm sure. You, I'm sitting here with a, talking to somebody that's a total stranger, and he going, "Yo, man, I heard this," and not like, "What?" Yeah, yeah, crazy, right? That's that's not the truth. Yeah, you know. No, so I was like. When it, when it, when the opportunity presented itself for me to write the book, I was like, man, I'm about to so kind of set the record straight. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. tell the, tell my story. Put it man. all out there. A lot of people lying on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was that kid. <laughs> I didn't steal any cookies. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I ain't take them. I ain't eat the cookies, man. You did. No, I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Luther, we uh, definitely want to thank you for having you on the show tonight. Um, I think the the most important part about this is that you know you're able to help people now because you lived through all this, you know, and nobody wants to hear this from a so-called expert or a doctor, you know, because they, they can't relate to them, right. you know, and this is, you know, I'm sure what you've gone through is what a lot of other people have went through. So, you know, the, the whole thing is just, you know, it, it's, it's great that you're able to tell it and that, you know, people will benefit from this, you know, that's un, undoubted. Well, I mean, that's why I wrote the book. That's why I do motivational speaking. Um, that's why I mentor kids. That's why I, um, I pray for people. I go to church now. Um, I'm, 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 I'm involved in ministry. Uh, I'm, looking, I'm getting ready to work on another book. I'm actually in a movie. I've I'm, I'm, uh, got a really? little role in a movie coming out tomorrow. It's called um, Living With No Regrets. And they're going to um, oh, do awesome. two uh, showings that the AMC did at... Uh, Jersey Garden Mall tomorrow at 79, yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. So I'm looking forward to making my screen debut. Did you have any lines? or? Yeah, I, I was actually teaching kids how to shoot free throws. It was, it had a, it's a small little what was part. Your, what was your free throw percentage teaching yeah. kids? <laughs> Shouldn't they have Stockton um, doing that scene? <laughs> not, yeah, right now. I, I, I could shoot. I yeah, wasn't, a, I wasn't a Shaquille O'Neal. Oh. <laughs> I could, I could well, who That's is? my man, too. Shout out to Shaq Diesel. Yep. That's my He's dude. definitely watching. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Hey, uh, watches every week. Before we get out of here, let's get to know Luther a little better. A couple, couple questions that we like to do with our guests usually. Uh, you know, just a little rapid fire, if okay. you will. Uh, what's, you know, your favorite meal? I like that yard bird. You know what yard, yard bird? Excuse is? me, <laughs> ostrich. No, I like. <laughs> no, I like. I like chicken. Ah. I'm, 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 yo, my wife makes the best turkey chops. You ever had turkey chops? Nah. nah. Oh my. Like God. pork chops with turkey. They, they turkey though. chops. They really? So good. I just had some last night. How come she it? didn't bring any? We, we ran out. He ate all. Come on. She must be a good cook. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, I, I know you're into music. Uh, you know, other than your own, who, who's your favorite musician? Wow. I like John Mayer. Yeah, really? I like wow. George Benson. I like B.B. King. I like... Uh, your body is a wonderland. What about what about 15 <laughs> MOFE's <laughs> own uh, heavy bag? Um, I, don't, I haven't heard ah, any of the, um, good. the music. I, 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 you know, I de- the type of music I play... Um, yeah, get I'm, into your... I'm I know old. you said your, your passion is uh, music. Talk a little bit about that and what you're doing. You're telling me about your studio um, I and whatnot. Stu- I work out of a studio here in Bayonne. It's l Studio. Shout out to the engineer, my man Igor. Um, we on 47. Ain't better than HJ. We on, we have 47 um, Kennedy Boulevard for people that's looking to record, and we got do rehearsals over there live sound. Oh, so 47. That's downtown. Third street. That's the, yeah, I'm I'm so. Oh, I'm coming. That's I'm the coming beginning. one day. He always invites himself. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I'm coming. Oh, um, well, um, listen, I'm right there. It's not like I'm walking for 45. If, if Eli Manning could do it, right? Between yeah. Third and Gertrude. Um, it's local. Right next to the pizzeria over there. Um, I also also a mobile DJ. I do weddings. I do bar mitzvahs. I do sweet sixteens. I do cookouts. That, that must be a trip for you coming. I, in you know DJ, what? Huh? I had at a bar mitzvah. I, I, no, I haven't done one yet. I was booked to do it, and the kid got it. Got in some type of he trouble. Wet his pants when he seen it. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Did you Did you still get paid for the gig? Nah. Oh. Nah. So, <laughs> I'm going to well, get that kid. You're, when not, you're, not, you're not going to win that loss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but yeah, yeah I got a mobile, little mobile DJ business. Um, and I'm a musician. I play lead guitar, bass guitar, I play drums. Nice. Really? Yeah. And um, I do a lot of studio work. So That's anybody, unbelievable. If my man needs some guitar, some guitar, hands, guitar nice. riffs on the track, let me know. I got you. Yeah, nice. do, you, do you get the guitar specially ordered or what? Nah, Those man. Monsters. Nah, brother. I've got soft hands, man. Like eight chords at once? <laughs> yeah, i got soft hands. How do you do in the wintertime with gloves? <laughs> <laughs> I, I put socks on my hands. <laughs> Oven mitts. <laughs> <laughs> I wrap my hands with towels. <laughs> Gotta be an oven mitt for each no, finger. No, I, I mean, I, can, I got gloves. I go to the um, I go to Casual Mail. They usually take care of me. Oh yeah, there you yeah. go. The big and tall, the big, yeah, on. not the big and tall. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I got to get my clothes at, man. Big and tall. Awesome. Or hers. Shout out to hers on West Side. They keep me looking hip hop. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep that swag up, baby. Keep that's right. Hop, Y'all know what the anonymous? definition of swag is, though, right? You have a Google swag. I live it. Nah, you don't, don't want to live well, it. Well, I don't know if you, you know, know, right? Yeah, you don't want to. Y'all don't want swag. No, nah, no. Nah, nah, I'll right. take your word for it. Y'all don't want swag. Yeah. I kind of want to know since we're on internet radio. You want me to tell him? We're in cyberspace. Oh, yeah. You can go for it. Swag stands for so we are gay. <laughs> <laughs> you know that? Pause. Google, uh, look, I'll gar- if you Google it, I guarantee you that you'll see it. All right, all right. Well, he- boy, we should so, probably Google that. So we want, <laughs> and, and, and that's one to grow on. <laughs> uh, well, I'll never use that again. Word, don't say that. In the next commercial. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. No, but definitely, uh, you know, we are running out of time. They're uh, an ornamental festoon of flowers. <laughs> so, we yeah, you were right. You were basically right. Yeah. Why was no, that in your bookmarks, Walt? Go down. Oh, here we go. Urban Dictionary. The most word used in that the whole Urban Dictionary, era. man. Oh, that's good. What do you got? A lot of cursing. A stupid saying that's overused. People 90% are dumb teenagers, 10% are little ass kids trying to be cool, use it for everything, and, and also their Facebook host. name thinking that shit's cute. All right. I just opened a cabinet, swag. I just fell down. That's what it says. We'll take your word it's for it. Indeed. Indeed. More, more. All right. Yeah. So, I won't call you a Luther, liar. <laughs> we, we, we want to thank you for coming on tonight. Yeah, Luther, uh, a thank tremendous you very much. interview. Thank you, very much. Uh, thank you guys for a tell having all, me. Uh, hide nothing. Yeah, thanks yeah, for sharing your story. Here. Definitely. Thanks, very, Make sure y'all go out proud. and get that book. Absolutely. Yeah, Definitely. I'm available. My website is uh, www.lw50.com. The book is titled A Perfect Fit. It's available anywhere you buy a book. Barnes & Noble. Uh, Borders no longer exist, but I think they're still online. Amazon. They're cheaper on Amazon. I wasn't supposed to say that, but I'm <laughs> trying, trying to generate some books. Get the paperback. It, yeah, it's in paperback. Or you can download they it. They have the Kindle. Yeah, yeah. So I got it, it all. I got it on my iPad Everybody's and my phone. That nice. So it's all good, man. All right. All right, Luther. Thank you again for coming on. Appreciate you guys, man. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing with this sports show, Definitely. Man. Thanks, and man. and if they don't much. like it, you're going to kick their ass. Yeah, that's huh? right. <laughs> let's, let's go awesome, Giants. Y'all ain't say nothing about that's my right. Giants, man. That's right. Tell uh, Shaq to answer when I call. Let's go Giants. All right. Coming up after this break, we got the Coles News Network. Coming up. All right. But 
But first, we got a video from Audio Insight. It's called Bathe in the Earth. We are 14A Sports on 50 Minutes Fame Radio. Right back with CNN. Walsh got swag. 15 Minutes of Fame. Let's go. 